being October in Hollywood, celebrating all the music and arts that's going on in the whole month of October, including the music festival. So whether or not Jimmy Kimmel ends up partnering up with us on the festival or just doing their own separate concert, uh, it's all going to take place around the same time as fall. Well. And we, we can switch it from OIH only in Hollywood to October in Hollywood, right, the whole month. Yeah, we're kind of yeah. we're kind of giving them both those names. Now. Yeah. Um, Okay, and the second thing is uh, Capitol Records, which is, I think we mentioned in the last uh, meeting, is going to have their 75th anniversary uh, with a, celebrated with an outdoor concert on October 21st. Um, so again, expanding it to the month of October would allow that to be part of our uh, music and arts festival. Um, then this is something I don't really know about, but this is uh, staff met with Wide Angle Group. Um, who might, uh, okay, who, they were initially hired by <coughs> IMG. I don't know what IMG. Uh, yeah, go ahead. A little background on this. Yeah. yeah. Um, Wide um, Angle. <coughs> Wide. I'm just going to go with Wag. They are an event production company. They produce events all over the country and year round. They do music events, beer festivals, um, artisanal events. IMG is a large um, <coughs> management agency. They handle intellectual properties. They have a lifestyle group that um, creates its own events. They have a beer garden concept that is part of that. And they had come to me um, and asked, actually, and this is what's so interesting about this story that I love, is they called me to talk to me about Caruso. They thought, well, we should do it at the Grove. And I said, we should do it in Hollywood. And they are super excited and interested. And they are currently, they have walked um, the footprint of the event. They're currently looking at places. They need about 40,000 square feet. Um, they pull in about 3,000 people per day. Um, it is a ticketed event, um, but it can very nicely coexist with our event, and we are very interested in a dialogue around co-branding and opportunities for partnership, um, bringing the stage to their beer gardens, so there's a variety of ways. So um, they are the producer. They will come back to us with kind of what their vision for how they would use the space would be. Um, but I think it's a great entree to the IMG um, in terms of what's going on in Hollywood because they probably sit in an ivory tower somewhere on the west side and don't know. Um, and so it's an exciting opportunity and it shows the power of Hollywood because the minute I said Hollywood, I mean, he was like, yeah, we're the road. Let's do Hollywood. <laughs> so it tells you that people want to 
want to be here and they want to activate here in interesting ways. So they would do this in outdoor spaces? Yes, yeah. all outdoor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Got some ideas for them and we've yeah. shown them and so we're just continuing just to have a dialogue with them. Nothing's been said. Yeah, that's, yeah. yeah. and it's really perfect timing because of course beer gardens and beer yeah. fest, October yeah. fest, so it's perfect. It's Fantastic. really, I mean, I yeah. Be great. Anyway, we don't even use the music. This is an FYI that they like to hear. The parking lot we're looking at is the one behind Urban Outfitters. We talked to the guy who, who operates it and he's open to leasing that parking lot. So that's at the corner of Ivar and Selma. And then if you had to spill out onto Ivar and Selma for additional street space, it, it's not high, it doesn't impact traffic. So that's one of the ways we can And what's great too is they can distribute, like they need a total amount of square footage, but if that meant that there were four different pods that would actually really reinforce our intention to get people moving, that's another way that they could envision the sort of execution of the event. So. It's even better. It is, definitely. So then um, the next point is about getting the mid-bid involved, um, possibly with some kind of art walk experience. I, I, it's funny, when I was coming over here today, I noticed well, there's quite a few galleries right near here. So, um, okay, groping them in. Uh, and then the Sunset and Vine bid agreed to provide um, $20,000, matching sponsorship of $20,000. Um, and then this is a really interesting thing which I hadn't heard about, which is uh, looking into the, something called Make Music Day, which is a global um, phenomenon where communities provide a way to celebrate music for one day. It happens in 120 countries. It could potentially be something simple, um, and how simple and humble this is for Hollywood, but uh, anyhow, um, and paved the way for the October. Oktoberfest. Anyway, um, you want to say more about that, Kevin, or somebody? Um, I know we're kind of <coughs> working on uh, finding out how we can kind of partner with the overall Make Music. There's a Make Music Los Angeles, but we're trying to find out if we would be to start going Make Music Hollywood. I believe it's June 21st. Uh, it's the day that it happens all over the world. So we're just trying to find out a way that we could participate and, and make something happen. Um, that we kind of shine the spotlight on Hollywood for not only that day, but then, like you said, the festival coming up too in the whole month of October. It sounds like it could be something as simple as having an open mic in a plaza mm -hmm. and a piano, and everyone comes, and it's it's it can be that simple and humble. Uh, oh, right. could, yeah, so yeah. It, and it make music Des Moines. I mean, they, right. they're all over the place. Right. So someone, I mean, local musician brought it to our attention. We thought, well, cool, let's look into that. Yeah. And just a question: Do we want to be affiliated with that, or we have to? And then the last point, um, maybe Michael, you want to talk about it. Are you there listening? It's about, here. Here. Uh, here. about the last point is about music cities. Well, you know, I don't know much about it. The, uh, I, I spoke to a professor uh, who teaches the music business here in New York and he mentioned to me that he, he knows about that organization and it's worth meeting with them. He would introduce me at some point to the to the head of it. It's a group that I guess somehow looked at the combination of music and economic development. How cities can use, use music with music business for economic development. And I thought it was just a potentially something to look at not necessarily in the context of the festival organization itself, but just something academically to keep in mind about maybe a way to have ideas, how does this really benefit the neighborhood? It's sort of what we've been talking about in the past. But nothing concrete, nothing really, to, I think this round is going to be successful, but, but maybe, you know, placeholder, uh, we'll get some ideas in the future. Okay, that's it. Yeah, I have one more thing. Um, these are hot off the press. This is the 2016 visitor guide. It's going to be good for 12 months, so even though it's already March, um, the, the coupons will be good for a year period. This was the hardest visitor's guide I've ever put together because there has been a ton of turnover as far as who makes the decisions for advertising at a lot of our um, uh, our businesses here. So I was able to kind of make new relationships with the new people, but that was 
you know, it happened pretty late, so um, hopefully that means it'll be easier moving forward. But this is another good example of working with Haynes and Cohen, how our branding is echoed here in our visitor guide. Um, we print, I think, half a million of these every year. Um, and it really is very popular with tourists and people that use it. You know, not everyone's phones work here when they come here from another country. Um, so this is a really good way for people to find their way around Hollywood. So I will pass these around so that you can look at them and they will be out on the streets um, by next Wednesday, I've been told. And what's the distribution? Uh, so we use a company called Certified Folder and they have over, I think it's 650 locations um, where they stock brochures. Um, probably the most popular one is at Hollywood Highland at the Visitor Center. Right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. for your report. Um, you know, just because we have some scheduling conflicts, we haven't forgotten about Streetscape, but if we could just cover one topic of new business, which is the first one um, for the new for the trust, I think we did two more videos, Kevin and Kevin. Um, we had the first uh, meeting of the um, of the mid bid uh, ad hoc group, and that's I think the last time I'll refer to it at that because that doesn't mean anything. So we're going to call it we're going to call it sort of Central Hollywood. We're going to rebrand it and think about it in way. And then at the first meeting, which was really well attended, Mark and Beth Andrus and Gal and I and Karen and the whole staff. Um, we sort of started with the basics. You know, what what is the mid bid? Who's in the mid bid? Excuse me, Central Park, yeah. um, <laughs> Hollywood Central. Or, um, what do we have here, and um, and where can we go with it? And let's let's let's, let's try to figure out the logic of this uh, central area. Um, and the staff did a good job doing some good prep on um, on who's here, and we went over it block by block. We um, we analyzed uh, what's coming, what's going, and, and what exists, and what are the opportunities, and. Um, we realized that we need to really drill deeper and we need to go into each block and we need to go into each owner and we need to um, um, leverage our current relationships to um, to get the owners in the central portion of the um, of hollywood to um to uh to understand that change is possible um good change is possible while still supporting some existing use and uh, we're going, one of the things that we're going to do is create some uh, dialogue in between with some of those property owners. And uh, hopefully we're going to be doing that over the next, um, the next several weeks. Um, we are absolutely going to figure out ways in which to tie this area into the Only in Hollywood um, um, Festival. Um, perhaps trying to maximize some potential for um, um, the ways in which we can use art um, um, in that way. Um, what we're really trying to figure out is the is the right way to um, to create the story so that we can we can create the change um, in an incremental way. Um, we are going to look very carefully at current vacancies um, block by block. We are going to try to pitch those owners on creating certain pop-ups, and maybe we'll try to tie that into the Only Hollywood Festival and create the art pop-ups in those vacancies. And we'll need everybody's help on that. Um, we are um, going to uh, to try to meet on a monthly basis to further uh, the goals of the committee. Um, what have I missed? Sounds right. I think at the end of the day, we this area here needs to grow up. It's time. I will provide a coffee can starting tomorrow for anybody who ever refers to this area as the mid bid. One dollar goes in. We get out of that, that habit. We find our own identity. I will say one thing. I do take umbrage to the festival being referred to as the festival of music. Because, as some of you know, I have a gallery we participate in. And although there is no direct correlation, lo and behold, from our participation three months, Later in this month's Los Angeles Magazine, my gallery got a buy one. So this, is, this is what plus the arts festival. It is. I, yeah, yeah. I, I'm just plugging plugging the gallery, so to speak. So no, I think we're. Uh, I think the whole idea is going to be focused on the landlords developing those relationships and really trying to find where our niche is going to be. Really sort of find what we can offer, what we're good at, the opportunities. And I think working concisely with the community is going to be the way that we can proceed. 
just one um, one add. Um, there are some really interesting things happening, and that um, was a one that gave us such fabulous briefing on all the changes that are going on um, in your space, which uh, we should all take advantage of. Um, we are also doing uh, a major renovation next door that um, will help uh, change the way this block is seen, you know, hopefully three, four months down the road. So there are the beginnings of stories to be told, and um, we're going to maximize them. What are you renovating? Pardon? What are you developing? Uh, we're renovating the store next door, which used to be, uh, you know, first. basically a counterfeit first store. And, <laughs> and, uh, it's going to be. So what is it going to be? It's going to be a real first store. It's a very, <laughs> it's a very cool space um, that will be uh, either a fabulous design space, a, um, a great creative office space, a great gallery, or a food and beverage place. Um, I've been trying to do some digging. I need some help, but I think it was. Yeah partially the home of Manning's cafeteria in the in the 30s. Mm -hmm. um, we've uncovered a lot of cool stuff. We're restoring uh, some you know beautiful brick wall and it's just really it's gonna be nice. Anything else? No, we're good. Thank you so much for that. It seems like a lot of things have taken place. It's been a busy month. Yeah. Since then, we're going to move from new business back to street state just to get back on the agenda. Um, so we're going to come here. Did you want to finish security? Is that done? Mm -hmm. Security is done. Well, no, I don't know we can do security. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, one, uh, we uh, sat down with the city attorney and the council office uh, this month. The AIDS program is the Administrative Code Enforcement Program, which is <coughs> a way uh, to streamline the enforcement of misdemeanor quality of life issues that have been difficult to um, tackle uh, in the past. And we are specifically working on a skateboard initiative on the Walk of Fame, or the children here also, uh, which is gonna involve having signs posted um, at least every 50 feet, because it's part of the enforcement and you have to be able to say there was a sign here warning you about that. Um, all along the Walk of Fame, and uh, we're looking into uh, whether the city can produce those signs, get them installed, and then possibly we would also try to encourage some property or business owners to post larger signs uh, so there's no confusion about the fact you can't skateboard, bicycle, or use hoverboards on the Walk of Fame. So that, that um, uh, project is underway. And then the other thing, just um, I'll just briefly uh, report on, there's been a lot of developments in, in the area of homelessness in the past month, um, not the least of which is um, the city and the county are working in an unprecedented way to collaborate uh, on this joint plan that they both put out in February. And, um, and the plan is gonna have to be predicated upon some funding sources to meet the, the goal, the goal for the city uh, to make any meaningful impact over a 10-year period is is a 1.8 billion dollar investment, largely in housing, and uh, for the county, the goal over a five-year period is 1.4 billion dollars. And so, where this new city-county collaborative is different from the past is that there actually is serious thought going into how to fund uh, the, the housing and the services that are necessary to address this very large homeless population that has you know, um, evolved all over the county. I was in a meeting this morning, um, and what, what's very interesting is that uh, uh, the city has done some public opinion polling, and the chamber, LA Chamber did some polling um, related to the growth initiative to determine where people stood on the Neighborhood Integrity Initiative because they've got to begin to figure out what messaging is going to resonate with the voters on this. In, in um, open-ended, unaided question that was asked of voters in the city poll, uh, what do you think is the most important issue facing the residents of LA that you would like to see city government do something about? Open-ended, un, un, what do you call it, like unaided, like homelessness topped crime, police, transportation, traffic, jobs, blah, blah, blah. So that is un that's unprecedented, and it, I think it's evocative of the fact that it's, it's so prevalent throughout the whole city right now. And the chamber poll, um, homelessness also uh, was at the top of the list 
crime was number five. So uh, the county is doing some polling right now because the county is looking very seriously at a number of tax options. Uh, one might be a per parcel tax on every parcel in the county, um, a marijuana tax, um, because I guess on the November, the November ballot right now, state ballot is gonna have between 22 and 25 ballot measures. So it's gonna be, a, you better like take a, a snap into the ballot box. <laughs> it's gonna be a long, Ballot but there will be a recreational marijuana ballot measure on the on the November ballot, and so the question is whether or not there should, it should be you know there should be a one-two punch for a tax measure to go with it, um, a transaction and use tax, and um, in the city they're looking at a linkage fee on new development, a documentary transfer tax, a recording fee on real estate documents, and a housing bond. The other thing that they're looking at, which is really interesting, is when you know we've had the, the Metro folks here talking about Measure R, or the son of Measure R, which is another half cent sales tax to fund the next couple decades of Metro projects, because homelessness is polling higher than transportation right now. Is there any wisdom in trying to capture the flag at this moment and dedicate half cent sales tax to addressing homelessness while strike while the iron's hot because this window in time may, may pass us. So I just wanted you to be aware that this is, um, the, the scope of the problem in the city is it's so evident, it's so um, ubiquitous, and, and there's serious conversations going about dedicating hundreds of millions of dollars to actually address this. I think I'll end there, you know, I'll keep you posted on it. Um, that's going on. Okay, so the Streetscape Committee met a few weeks ago and we discussed our potential projects for this upcoming year. The top ideas were gateway signage, uh, permanent lighting, and murals. And oh, the first hand up is our, uh, our budget. And we also discussed reviewing potential operations management software to track maintenance tasks. And so I'm going to let Matthew take over here. Yeah, so um, last month Joe reported on this idea of auditing our maintenance contract just to uh, assure that they're in compliance. And uh, since then, we've sat down with our vendor, our, our, um, our uh, contract managers, and we had a conversation with them about some of our concerns. Uh, specifically the lack of reporting and, and the lack of data that they're collecting, uh, which we really need for the upcoming bid renewal. So we talked about that and we also uh, talked about uh, the things that Claire mentioned about branding, uh, kind of the missed opportunities. Um, and they were very open to everything. They um, we talked about the software and they're interested in um, taking that on themselves. So. Uh, incorporating some software to, to help track all of the maintenance tasks. Mm -hmm. They also are going to uh, attach GPS trackers to the uh, street sweepers and also the pressure washers so that each month we can pull a report and you know make sure that they're pressure washing as, as they should be. So uh, it was productive. They also um, committed to getting us some new vehicles. As, as Claire mentioned, we don't want our logo on you know, um, some of the beat up trucks that they, they currently have, so uh, they're gonna dedicate some new vehicles, we're gonna wrap them with vinyl, uh, our logos, and also they're gonna rebrand the uniforms as well with the new logos, so, uh, so it was a good meeting. Okay, uh, next up we have the change order to the Plain Street contract. Can I, can I ask you a question, what are three gators and what is? Sure, so uh, the, the budget that you have, uh, those are kind of our anticipated expenses. Tree gators are the, uh, I don't, they're the little green bags on the trees. You see them a lot in the Sunset District. We have some on some new trees we planted on Ibar south of Hollywood, but they're slow watering bags, uh, so that when you do water the trees without them, the, the water just kind of runs off of the, the tree well, and this uh, just helps the, the roots absorb them. Uh, the other one, mutt mitts, those are the, the doggy waste bags. Uh, we have some up uh, near Yucca and also on, on Brighton Street. Yeah, so is that Kenny Street fills those? Kind of street fills those? Yeah, we, yeah, we ordered them on an ongoing basis and Kenny Street restocks them. Thank you. Sure. <laughs> okay, the change order to the Clean Street contract. We had a draft in front of us last month and we were ready to approve it. Um, it includes updated items uh, for the scope of work, 
including tree watering and landscaping. Yeah, so there's, uh, these are the same documents that we had uh, last month. We just didn't have it as an action item. So um, we've got the, the top sheet, which is just a, a summary of what's being changed. And then we have the red line underneath that that shows what's being added. So I don't think there was any questions on this last month. But um, if there's no additional questions, we seek a, a motion to approve this change order. Wait, wait, I have a question. Sure. Um, I know you said you had a conversation with them and they were going to do all these other things for us. Mm -hmm. Are we going to capture that in an updated contract? Yes. Uh, so we're going to amend again. Yeah, we'll have to talk about how that would work. Um, but yeah, as, as of yet, they have not implemented any of this. this these are kind of ideas at this point. So. Okay, so we can, yeah, amend it once again to include these, these new things. Okay. And that's another thing that we suggest to be, you know, maybe it's something that they think they can have, but I want to know what is the possibilities that, sure. you know, for us to have the top-notch maintenance. Sure. Okay. So I'm sorry, we have a motion in control? <clears throat> Somebody may have beat me to it, though. I'll, I'll make the motion. Mark made it, I can second. Okay, thank you. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? I'm going to abstain not for uh, here or there, but I didn't see it, so I can go in blind. Okay. No, the last one I thought oh, I was here. Oh, so I just... Okay, great. Okay, and next up, LACE has approached us to support their California Arts Council grant application for Creative California Communities funding. Uh, you have a handout explaining the program, and then a draft of the letter that Carrie would sign. Um, so LACE is proposing to activate their storefront with rotating art exhibits, and awardees of this grant receive between thirty and seventy thousand dollars. And it aims to foster the development of a cultural community hub for Hollywood Boulevard. So these are our neighbors, just a couple of doors down for Los Angeles uh, Contemporary Exhibitions uh, Gallery in the, the, uh, the mid block area. Well, it's Central Park Hollywood. <laughs> 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 it's <a> dollar. <laughs> I said mid block. Uh, so yeah, so they're just asking for uh, our support. So we drafted this this letter, uh, and we're seeking approval to uh, to sign this letter. I would move to that. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. My last word is uh, our next meeting is Wednesday, March 23rd at 8 a.m. in this room. And I've got one more to tack on here. Um, we have uh, another handout in the packet. It's uh, the contract, a page of the uh, Queen Street contract. Um, there's a provision in there. It's yeah, it's uh, the CPI. Yeah, the services agreement here. It's got yellow highlight at the bottom. Mm -hmm. We've got a CPI uh, provision in there, um, which can be adjusted annually at our discretion. So uh, we're recommending a one percent CPI increase, which is the annual average for this area. Um, so Joe, when he budgeted for the maintenance contract, he included an additional uh, $10,000 uh, just in case this request was made by Queen Street. So um, if we approve the 1% increase, we'll still be about $2,500 under uh, the maintenance budget. My suggestion would not be to increase until we see that they're gonna actually provide us with upgraded services that we discussed. I mean, that would be my opinion, it's just up to the board for a discussion. I agree with that. What, are they asking for 2.3, but we're recommending one? That was their original ask. Uh, they calculated it wrong, so Joe uh, went online and did the correct calculation, and it was 1%, so that's uh, countered to that 1%. I totally and I agree that we should hold off until yeah. we sort of get a better understanding of what we should be getting and what's getting before we do any increases. Yes. So I'll make a motion that we actually deny an increase in CPI. At this point in time. At this point in time. Second. Do, do we need a motion for this? He's going to do a for us. Okay, great. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any Aye. opposed? Any abstentions? If any Queen Street could come to this uh, maintenance um, streetscape committee meeting, and uh, we can be very clear what it is we're expecting from them. Okay, great. Perhaps at 830 on Wednesday? It's 8. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> this, this coming Wednesday? This coming Wednesday, yes. Okay. 
some of the, and Monica and I are going to meet tomorrow to kind of go over this more more directly. But basically, in the summer, what I think we need to move toward is creating an ad hoc formation committee for Sunset in Hollywood. This is not a board function. The way this is done, this is a proponent group that is formed and is separate from the board. It does not report to the board. You do not that you do not make decisions for this group. This is a separate formation ad hoc committee. And John was the chair of this, can you believe like eight years ago or seven years ago? So uh, anyone can be on it, um, but it is not something that ends up, um, you, you're not, the, the ultimate decision on whether or not this ad hoc committee does the right work is whether or not they can get a bid approved and get the petitions <coughs> signed you know, in another year. So forming that ad hoc committee, um, one of the thoughts I had was bringing in a panel of um, consultants or bid pro professionals from throughout the state to share with you best practices and other ways of doing bids because there's been a lot of evolution in places like San Diego and Sacramento and Union Square and um, Long Beach. We, we can learn from other bids and um, this is the perfect time to like, stimulate creative thinking about how to, how to uh, design this, this bid for the new um, time. And would that pertain to like structure or how the committee level would go ahead? The programs, you know, what, I'll just throw a couple examples out. This bid has never done real economic development or retail recruitment. Some bids are super involved in that. You know, is that something that you, you want, you envision wanting to do in the next season? Um, an idea had uh, that was had was um, to help hold security costs down because so much of our security deals with the local homeless population, maybe instead there should be a contract with a dedicated outreach provider who actually is the boots on the ground doing um, work with the people who are homeless in the bid and takes the burden off our security and you're, you're actually entering into contract with a service provider to do that. Um, different ways of, uh, I mean, an, another idea would be, um, do we bring our accounting in-house? You know, do we, um, uh, we have everything we do, we, we outsource to vendors. Would it make sense to bring any of these functions inside? So everything, this bid comes to a complete end. And so the, the, the thing to think about is that this is your chance to design something that looks completely new or is a modification. And so would those ideas be with this ad hoc formation be paste to the property owners and say, yeah. hey, this is what our vision is for the, the renewal? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We put together a management district plan and send it out for, for approval. Yeah. And it's everything's on the table technically assessments, boundaries, services, you name it. You can start all over, completely redo it, or do it exactly like we did before, uh, or some hybrid. <coughs> and if I remember correctly, the funding is totally separate and apart from the bid? This is correct bid. The, the existing bid. Right. Mm -hmm. At the formation committee, et cetera, if any funds were needed, they would need to be raised. Yeah, but I don't see any funds being needed uh, okay. because I don't see us hiring any technical assistance beyond the work that we're currently doing. So, um, yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, so yeah, exploration of different options to designate sales of benefit, flexible expense categories, uh, eliminating general benefits so we don't get um, skewered on that topic, two bids or one. We have to update the entire parcel database, bring all the contacts current, which actually Matthew and, and Joe have begun to work on. Um, I would think that our all property owners meeting this year would actually help orient our property owners to be thinking about this and maybe um, there would be some uh, survey, you know, work done or, you know, reaching out to our stakeholders as to what they see for the future. Um, and then we would also want to outreach to the different homeowners associations because we do have some condo associations here and they do vote. Um, in the third quarter, um, creating uh, detailed parcel maps for the entire Hollywood area. We have to update those because that helps you kind of determine every parcel is, is billed separately. So we need to get all those parcel maps updated. Um, <clears throat> Uh, exploration of new boundary maps, um, surveys and focus groups of stakeholders, 
And then I would say by the end of the third quarter, we have to the finalized decision, is this going to be two bids moving forward or, or one? So. Carrie, when is the sunset bid term? Same time. Same parallel? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then the fourth quarter would begin to, you know, set a, set a budget. How much do you want this new bid to, um, <coughs> what, what, what's the service array? Oh, sorry. <laughs> You're, you're in the third quarter and I'm looking and it says Involve is a consultant. So this is a consultant who is working for nothing. No, the consultant, we have a consultant that does that does our parcel maps right now, Will Dan, our database, and they, they track all of our parcels. And they update them automatically. Yeah, we would have, we would have them do that anyway. Got it. So okay. there's no new talent being brought into the picture. Um, let's see. Uh, Creation of program budget and budget options, initial discussions around an assessment formula, um, and uh, decide the length of the new bid. Would it be a five-year bid, seven-year bid, 10-year bid? Um, I would say that in the second year, we probably would budget. We have to budget um, to do an engineer's report, and we have to budget to do a um, some of the, the detailed, probably assessment formula work, because it's a lot of number crunching. So that would have, but it's it's not the legwork is going to be done by us by staff. <coughs> you know, some organizations have to spend tens of thousands of dollars to do that kind of uh, shepherding. But we're we're here, and we've done it before. So that's that's 2016, and then you know, 2017 is on the horizon. The the goal is to actually have a um, a draft of the management district plan. Uh, submitted to the city clerk at the beginning of the third quarter of 2017. So I, I would say you're, you're in the fun stage right now of, of doing the brainstorming and kind of ideating. The, the technical work starts later, but take advantage of this time to really be dreaming about where you see how you're going. Um, yeah, you know, Ron, you might have more current information because I heard that they have stopped gathering signatures. Oh yes, uh, uh, they have, uh, the uh, proponents of the neighborhood integrity initiative have announced that they pulled the uh, previous initiative and they have uh, streamlined it to eight pages from the original twenty-three, and uh, they. Uh, are planning to recirculate it and uh, and qualify for the March ballot. Uh, have not yet had a chance to review the changes uh, that they've made. We know one is that they're going to exempt uh, affordable housing projects that are 100% affordable. Not a mixed it's 100% right. Yeah. So what they're just, I think, yeah, there are some good news and bad news. The good news is I think we have them on the run. Uh, because they could see that they weren't going to get this passed in November. And I think some of the issues that we've raised uh, cast a lot of doubt on the uh, wisdom of this. And uh, so I think they basically uh, decided they'd regroup and uh, see if they could take some of the more onerous things out and then circulate it and see if it can pass. Uh, the bad news is that in March there will be uh, a smaller pool of voters, which obviously they are trying to go after. So that as one person said, you're trying to disenfranchise all the, the people who would have voted in November, uh, knowing that there'll be a smaller ele uh, election pool in next March. Uh, having said that, I doubt we'll have another meeting next week on this, but uh, all indications are they haven't improved it any, and uh, there's still a huge amount of arguments against this thing, and uh, we have a broad coalition on this, so. Uh, uh, we're moving forward to fight it as the uh, LA Chamber is uh, uh, leading the uh, charge on this and uh, we've got some great consultants on it. Uh, the, uh, the studies they've done on this show that the support for this initiative is very thin, not deep at all, which is surprising. As you mentioned, Terry, the concerns of the electorate are not about overdevelopment, it's more about issues of homelessness and crime than overdevelopment. So. Uh, uh, we will keep you posted. And there will be, obviously, the extra three months that will uh, revamp the campaign plan, but uh, 
uh, we'll probably need everyone's help to get the word out because uh, I think that it's going to be educating the public is going to be the key. The more the public learns about it, the less they're going to like. 